and the players are shuffling up. We have no idea what they're playing, right? No. No, and he didn't switch any of the uh, the headers. No. So, uh... Yeah, I can tell him to. Uh... I'm not sure if he's just going to delete the names or we'll just keep them there or what. Yeah, I'm switching between Swedish and... Okay, here we have it. Uh, so it's... <clears throat> Gordon is fixing up what is actually playing. I, I have no idea what to make out of that, though. <laughs> Metamorphosis? <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, he did say he's playing at least four colors, right? But He did say was... he's playing fi all five colors. So yeah. we'll see. Oh, 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 five. Okay, it's five colors. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I hope he's actually playing the card Metamorphosis because that would be absolutely awesome. Yeah. <laughs> I'm card that doesn't so... enough play. Tell us about the uh, metamorphosis. Metamorphosis. Um, yeah. It is uh, one green from Arabian Nights. You sacrifice a creature and you get uh, mana of any color equal to its mana cost. Yeah. And I think it might be plus one also. So you might be able to get that mana back, that green yeah. that you spend on it. You're... So, like, uh, sacrificing a Suchi would mean uh, that you would get. Uh, Five. Pay one, and then you get five for the metamorphosis, and then four for the suchi, which would mean that you would get like Colossus Sardia on the table. Exactly, so. but you can only cast uh, creatures with the uh, right. Mana. You can only cast creatures. With it. Yeah, and it's a sorcery, so there's a lot of restrictions. It's from Arabian Nights. If people... it is from Arabian Nights, yeah, it only costs one. So uh, yeah, just one of those cards is kind of cool. So hopefully something with that. But what can we do with that kind of mana regarding creatures? Oh, um, and it's yeah, just maybe. Oh, and he's oh he's showing his hand. Okay, so he's okay. playing the card Metamorphosis. It is in his hand yeah. right now. I see. Okay, now we should have called that because he's actually playing eggs. I guess. Mm -hmm. Of course, of course. That's a good way to so go. So ha having having a nice way to sacrifice your eggs is, is always a good thing. Yeah. Plus, you sack the egg and you get the mana, and you can <laughs> plop down another threat, so you have two threats in one turn. Yeah. You could go this is one hell of a on eggs. Holy cow. <laughs> he should call this, like, the chicken factory or something. <laughs> it, it, it just, like, play, what, play an egg. He needs a lot of uh, mountain or red mana, I guess, but... Red I need to get. I need to get better at uh, having restricted cards in my opening hand. I haven't mastered that skill yet. Yeah, so, uh, uh, you, you you need to like really focus when you mm -hmm. shuffle or I don't know, draw yeah. your hand when you. So a little mini mind twist here, getting rid of a couple of cards yeah. from David's hand. What are you th your thoughts about like going, turn one if you have, turn two like. What, what what are the why or when do you really want to mind twist? Um, I, I I really like to are do you it as early it up as possible. Or are you? Yeah, I mean, I'd like to do it as early as possible because it disrupts the game plan uh, the most. Uh, but obviously, if you can do it for uh, um, for the, the whole hand, then yeah. it's always good. All right, so. Uh, <clears throat> yeah, time like walk, regrowth, play the land. Untap. So, uh, actually, David is like kind of getting ahead, I'd say. And yeah. He got. The, I mean, I'm sure that that uh, um, mind twist didn't help. No. Candelabra. All right. Hmm. Now I'm intrigued. Yeah, we're okay. So we're thinking at least Mistress, I guess. Uh, it's one yeah, of the I, I like I like Candelabra in anything with uh, Mishra's Workshop, so that uh, you can uh, pay one, untap the shop after tapping it for three, and you get six mana out of two lands. Mm -hmm. But or is deploying and the egg that we mentioned earlier. Yeah, the mono base is kind of hurting Gordon right now. He's at mm -hmm. sixteen, but it might not matter. It feels like David is playing some. Not combo deck, but more of a grinded deck yeah. at least. And, and Gordon's got a, a Triskelion in his hand, so uh, he can uh, end up doing some uh, 
some big damage here. Uh, yeah, Cap the emerald for the metamorpho met metamorphosis, and then uh, sacking the egg for four. Uh, only tapping one extra mana after that, yeah. so playing a uh, Trisk. He actually made it work, like first try. <laughs> if if he succeeds, mm -hmm. uh, uh, with what he's doing now. Uh, and it's a sacrifice effect, so he can't really do it. Yeah, it's not an additional cost, I don't believe. Oh, okay, maybe not. Uh, sacrifice a creature to add. Okay, maybe not then. Well, mm -hmm. that's uh, then actually he could like re do respond with yeah. the thing, but it wouldn't like really he's bringing it up on the stream right now, which is nice. Okay, okay, there everybody can. He was see prepared. That. He was ready and rearing to go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so it's that much mana plus one to only cast creatures. But you're not flipping in response. Uh, you're you're obviously maybe flipping on the uh, dragon token. It's not a. <laughs> It's the wrong talk kind of token there, but there we yeah. have it. Uh, he technically doesn't get that until the end of the turn, but... Okay, yeah. I didn't really think about that. Maybe right about that. But I'm assuming he's going to... Yeah, there we go. So there's the, the Triskelion. Yeah. So we got uh, two, two four fours. Seems okay. I, I think so, and he's uh, actually going... Get in the factory, might as well. So, now Gordon, all of a sudden, he, he kind of developed the game in his favor, like, a lot this turn. Yeah, yeah definitely so. I can't what? quite make out that very last card. Do you think that, is that a regrowth in his hand? Uh... It, that we're seeing on the keyboard with that yeah. golden mess. I, is it a, it's not a plateau then? Oh, yeah, okay, that's a plateau. It might be. Uh, so David need to get something going, I guess. He flips on the Trisk. Yeah. Uh, the fun part about that is you need to shoot before you flip, right? Right. So, and and you can't use the uh, uh, the orb to to get the uh, the rook token. Yeah, you can't. No, you cannot. Yep, it has oh, to be yeah, a yeah. non-token permanent. Yeah, because the way orb was originally worded is it has to flip onto a card. I so see. they ended up changing the wording so it has to be flipped onto a non-token permanent. So yeah, but what I was getting at is that when you're activating the orb you need to yeah. flip uh, you need to not not flip you need to uh, use the trisk yeah yeah he should, he should have responded by shooting for three yeah and then uh yeah it's and maybe he did the right choice i don't know mm -hmm. i don't know maybe he was thinking gordon is saying okay, okay. gordon is I don't know if it, this goes out to stream or not, Rich. He says that he's uh, doing something. He's going against his cardinal rule in old school. Hmm. I don't know what that is. Is it a right. twister he's having in his hand? It looks like a twister in his hand, okay. yes. So I think the cardinal rule he has is that he needs to twister. But my, my cardinal rule is if someone twisters, everyone needs to accept the fact that we need to twister right now. Not maybe that you need to play it. I don't know if that's what he's talking about. Yeah, so really? he, even, even with uh, getting rid of the trike, he's doing a, a lot of damage. I think like that attack was for eight, and David's down to ten. So yeah, David needs to figure out something here pretty quick, and I think that that time twister would end up helping David more than it would um, help Gordon. Okay, Gordon actually mentioned, like, clarifies in the chat now that you should always play draw sevens for fun. And, uh, like, oh. the fun is... should always play them for fun. Oh, okay, yeah. it's an enchanter stack. Uh, uh, to also, to clarify for the chat, we can't really see the chat. Like, if I, I'll try to check in more. 
what you guys saying. So it's an Ashantra. Okay, so what right. more was so that? Now he's got... Uh, so he cast the Enchantress and then uh, used extra mana to untap both of his, his lands and then cast a Wild Growth. Mm-hmm. But, oh, anime dead. <laughs> All right, so... Uh, That's it. His so he can of just, in his he, draw, he just attacks of? here for eight. Yeah. And then, unless there's like a fog effect, then he casts Anime Dead on the Triskelion for the win. Uh, he can block with the. He can block, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if he's doing that. Uh, David is at 10. He will yeah, be... so he took it. Okay, okay. so that uh, Anime Dead is going to win the game. Depending on. I don't know. You, no, yeah, you can't really have yep. anything right for green black, I guess, or mm-hmm. the interactions there isn't really what you. Yeah. Need. So that was fun. That was fun. I, yeah. I, I like I like Meta, Metamorphosis. It's something that I've wanted to play. I have a play set of them. I just haven't put them in a deck yet. Mm-hmm. And the, you need to look at the cards that you want in your graveyard, and we did see now what. Like the concoction that Gordon put together. It's eggs and reanimation spells with Trisks going with the Metamorphosis, I guess. And we haven't. Okay, so it's Enchantress. What are we saying in Enchantress then, Rich? Um, so he probably has a bunch of uh, one green mana enchantments. Like, uh, um, obviously, we saw the wild growth. He might have something like. Um, uh, what's uh, the Concordant Crossroads? It's possible that he has uh, yeah. Rabbit Wombat in his deck. Yeah, um, right. With like Aspect of Wolf, um, things like that to, to grow. Um, I like the. Uh, He's playing John at least. He did yeah. play like Blue also. Yeah. Parts, so he, so. he could end up having things like, you know, his own, uh, uh, you know, cheap ones like uh, uh, maybe he has. Uh, you know, weakness or animate dead of his own yeah. or uh, something along those lines. Um, but so, so uh, is this what Gordon's bringing in? I guess <laughs> so. I don't know. Hey, uh, I'm not knowing. He's going, okay. <laughs> Maybe he's just going through what uh, his deck consists of, basically. Uh, he, like, it's not a top tier match oh he's playing sacrifice also okay so sacrifice is nice playing like uh he is he does have the colossus though so he does have the suchi uh metamorphosis and uh, colossus combo that's awesome and he he, he's playing jalem tome also (laughs) yeah that's good like with the reanimates Mm -hmm. Uh, and if you're playing maybe yeah, he couldn't see really the reach of Triskelion there. Uh, but if you're playing that kind of game, maybe you're not showing the Enchantress before the sideboarding, I guess. Right. Because you didn't really see anything. What was, what was the game plan mm-hmm. for sideboarding? But now Gordon is deciding what he's taking in against. And I don't know if he has any good things to take in. He's thinking about, like, I don't know, taking out... Okay, taking terrors in, I guess. Uh, I mean, I can, I can understand the terrors coming yeah. in for Enchantresses um, and the possibility of Wombats, but... It uh, also looks like he... what well, His options that he's going through is, like, uh taking out some of the combo pieces this is the hard part about playing like right. a combo <clears throat> deck you can't so yeah he, he just takes out a, a small portion of the combo pieces but he's got he's got a bunch of them left still in his deck so there there shouldn't be any issues with with doing some cool things um so no. that should be fun still yeah but like when you're playing all of this uh, like you need a certain amount of cards to make the deck tick. And it's right. hard to really... Right. He, that, he has enough redundancy because of the fact that he's playing uh, uh, Metamorphosis and Sacrifice so that yeah. uh, he can do he can do the fun things. Um, 
So he, he obviously isn't limited to just Suchi or uh, just uh, the uh, the Rook Egg since he's got both. So he basically, when he starts, he has eight pieces of uh, from each side of the combo. We've got, uh, yeah. you know, eight pieces for sacrificing to, to get a bunch of mana, and then we got eight, eight four drops that he wants to get rid of. So Yeah, and did um, we see any sushis also? I'm sorry? Gordon, did, did we see sushis in Gordon's deck? Yeah, Suchi. Yeah, and okay. he even sideboarded one of them out. So Yeah, 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 okay. <clears throat> uh, I'm, I'm thinking about sacrifice. Uh, it looked mainly like he's playing the creature-based strategy, right? Yeah. He's not doing anything else with the mana. Uh, the card sacrifice against metamorphosis. <laughs> uh, because he took out one metamorphosis, right? Mm -hmm. Instead of a sacrifice. I don't know if that's right or wrong. Well, turn one Incestor Recall from David seems pretty good. That's a good start. Probably having some more fast mana then. I hope he's got some fast mana. It really, really... Yeah. It sucks if you have to discard cards when uh, you yeah. have uh, played the Ancestral Recall okay. on turn one. Maybe he did. we didn't see because he didn't uh, do anything more there. Maybe he went down one card. Like Mulligan, turn one. No, he, he, he played it on the upkeep, on Gordon's okay, upkeep. Okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I see. So Gordon is uh, having a sacrifice, a set of bras. He's playing the demonic tutor. Demonic tutor. I'm guessing for his own ancestral recall. That's usually where you're going now, right? Ooh. Okay. Power sync for one. That's a key play for this game, yeah. I'd say. Uh, Gordon is pointing at his regrowth. Uh, I'm guessing if he would have gotten his Ancestral, he would also have right. had... Uh, now, there's an Enchantress. All right, so David might be able to get some things going here. Yeah. Oh, and Gordon just drew a Chaos Orb. <laughs> yeah. Now now is the question if he, he dares do it, if they're doing it right now, or if he... You can always fireball it for two. Okay. He's got yeah, a fireball yeah, his fireball as well. Also. Yeah. Yeah, and that's what it looks like. That's what he's leaning towards. Yeah. Mm. So he's also flipping, like pointing out that for the for us yeah. in the stream. So taking the point, fireball for two. Yeah, and that I, seems I like a better play answer. just in case. Yeah. You you haven't seen any real targets for the fireball yet, anyhow, right? Like, right. Uh, some other targets. Uh, and you mentioned like unholy oh, strength. Oh, ah. And dance of many. <laughs> okay, tell us about dance of many, Rich. Dance of many. It's uh, basically like a clone. It's an enchantment. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, it makes a a token that is a copy of target creature you control, and then it's got an upkeep of two. If mm -hmm. the token goes away, so does the dance of many. If the dance of many goes away, so does the token. Yeah, so you paid two blue uh, during mm -hmm. your upkeep. But now he's got two copies of Enchantress on the table. Yeah. So um, and, now uh, Gordon could Gordon could use the orb on the original Enchantress and uh, make it so that it ties up David's mana. Um, yeah, that looks like that's what he's going to do. No, he's just putting it in his graveyard, but Gordon's going to flip anyway. There he goes. Nice. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> so he still has one enchantress that has a Correct. upkeep of two then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an upkeep of two blue. Is that like the usually when how many cards? Is that a mind twist call? And it was <laughs> mind twist for three. Ooh. Uh, how are you when you're playing, Rich? Are you uh, like keeping count on how many cards the, your opponent is having? I, I try to mentally keep track. And um, whether or not I'm playing Mind Twist, I like to ask my opponent quite frequently how many cards they have in their hand. Yeah. Um, just like I, like another I think thing. I'm kind of that player also. Yeah. I don't uh, I don't stack up my graveyard so I can't see what's in there. I like to to be able to see what's in there so that if I draw a recall or a regrowth, 
I don't have to, uh, you know, tell my opponent basically that I have it by looking at my graveyard. Yeah. But I don't know. I, you, you might, they, yeah, what, what we're talking about is like how you're doing telltale signs, right? I'm sorry? What, what we're, what we're talking about now is like telltale signs, right? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and I think I'm looking through my graveyard anyhow. Uh, but yeah, it might be good to keep it straight like Gordon's instead of... Here, so he didn't get the regrowth with the uh, the Mind Twist, which was nice. So that means that... Uh, what does Gordon target here? Does he get the... Okay, he's going for the Tutor. And then he's going to cast the Tutor while David is tapped out. So many good choices. Yeah. Yeah. Looks like he's going to go for the animate dead or the ancestral. Oh, such choices. <laughs> oh, where to go? Where to go? I mean, if he casts the animate dead, he can get the Vivictus out of the out of the graveyard, and uh, he can start swinging for seven. But he's got to pay an upkeep of three every turn. Exactly. But looks like he's going for the ancestral. Yeah, that's usually the right move. You yeah. can always draw into the reanimate, right? <laughs> sure. That's the good part about Ancestral. Just try to get to reanimate somewhere in the top. <clears throat> I actually need to go and check on one of my kids, so I'll I'll leave you to it, Rich. I'll be okay. Right in a while. He's sitting there debating. Okay, so he did end up going for the enemy dead. Uh, going for the sure thing. There's nothing wrong with going for the sure thing, especially with so few cards in hand. Um, doesn't look like there's going to be a lot of counter spells coming from David. So, <clears throat> doing some cutting, and then probably just passing the turn. Ooh, Mana Flare. Mana Flare's a nice one. Yeah, that's... I didn't... Yeah, it's an enchantment, right? Yes, it is. He got to draw a card, and now he gets two mana. What's he going to do? It also means that he only has to tap one land to... Uh, um, oh, okay. So now he can get extra okay. mana out of the uh, the candle. But yeah, he only has to tap one land for the upkeep of uh, the Dance of Many now. So... That frees some stuff up. So uh, let's see we what Gordon can do talk after about this. That earlier, also, what the why he did play the candle in an enchantment text, but this yeah, it, it definitely makes sense now. Um, you know, a lot it, candle uh, isn't terrible for mana fixing anyway. If you have a lot of spells that cost double this or double that, so that uh, you can untap it with something else or whatnot. Yeah. And okay. One of my favorites. That's uh, Rasputin, right? And then yeah. he's removing so, the counters. Uh, he's removing six of the counters to cast a Triskelion. Yeah. So Seems good. Rasputin Dreamweaver uh, lets you remove... He, he enters with seven counters, right? Enters with seven, and then he can remove counters to add colorless mana. Uh, so... I don't know if it worked. It worked in favor for Gordon with that uh, mm -hmm. uh, mono flare, but that's usually also that way it, things might go when you're playing yeah. the kind of card. He's uh, reading the card mm -hmm. it's reading to his opponent. So you can also. Uh, it's a four-one. Is it? Yeah, it's a four-one, yeah. and you can add counters back on. Uh, um, you do that during your upkeep, right? So interesting fact about Rasputin is that uh, in in the rules, um, it's actually a state-based action that Rasputin can't have more than seven counters. It is the only card in mm -hmm. all of Magic's history that has its own state-based action. Yeah. So uh, it's just like, uh, you know, with damage on, on creatures and, you know, and uh, enchantments going away when they don't have anything to enchant. Uh, 
you know, dying when you're at zero life, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Rasputin can't have more than seven counters at any point in time. And anytime somebody would have priority, he checks and then the counters go away. <clears throat> Uh, All right, lots of mana here. And Mirror that, universe. That's when you're playing. I don't know what what the card is, but you're the and the artifact when you're putting away a card in Excel and putting it back. Uh, oh, uh, yeah, uh, Tarnus's coffin. Yeah, that's when it actually matters because you're not getting right, more. Right, right. If you Tarnus's coffin, a uh, Rasputin, um, Rasputin can't have more than seven counters, exactly. so it would just come back with it would come back with seven mm -hmm. so uh, but now Rasputin's counters Triskelion. aren't like Triskelion's counters they, they don't give it additional power or toughness or anything like that it's no. just uh, um, he can prevent damage that is dealt to him which is pretty nifty yeah. and he can use it for extra mana so. and then he can use it for extra mana but like if you're Tonos Coffining and Triskelion, you're getting extra counters, but yeah. Uh, and we have a mirror universe also on David's side. He's getting a bit foggy over there, but uh, I think this is kind of a even game. We don't see how many cards David is having right now, but he's flipping. Oh, that was a nice hit too on the trike. Chris. Yeah, and like we mentioned earlier, uh, Gordon needs to. Uh, respond before he actually yeah passed. and he didn't seem to do that now or did he i didn't see any life change but it's um i think he did uh wait no no he didn't he just yeah. uh david just took the damage from rasputin and that was it so that's <clears throat> really strong point for <laughs> chaos orbing when someone has a trisk in play but you need to mention that for to your opponent. yeah but uh, all right so we got the enemy now, dead bringing back the yeah. triskelion um Comes back with three counters again, and then so he's shooting the Triskelia. No, okay, no, <laughs> I was getting ahead of myself. I was thinking he was going off in some kind of matter <laughs> mm -hmm. <clears throat> because he did it so quickly. Sometimes you shoot your own Triskelion and play another reanimate spell, right? Yeah. So you're not trading lives if you only gain two. Uh, and I don't know how many cards David is having, but players can, it's actually free reign on playing cards right now. The mana is, uh, David, uh, he, he has everything he needs. Uh, he's showing off his graveyard. Yeah. Yeah, fanning out his graveyard, so he probably has a regrowth effect, either regrowth or recall. As you mentioned. Maybe. Right? Oh, Lich? Oh my god. This okay. Is, this is the Lich with an active Triskelion is kind of interesting. Uh, playing Lich, draw a card. That's nice. Yeah. All right. So Gordon has one turn to live. <laughs> mm -hmm. Because the Mirror Universe uh, switches life totals on the upkeep. So. Yeah. And. Uh, what can he do with the Lich, then? Um, does he have something like uh, Dark Heart of the Wood? Or does he have any other way to gain life? It's like he already played his Time Walk and, and then untapped, so that part's gone. Yeah, but he he, he can suck. He, Is I he going to use the Mana Flare and, and the Candle to do something silly like... Well, um, took one damage from the city. Yeah, stacking the mox. Is he going to do something silly like a big stream of life to draw a lot of cards? Might be. We're, we're that would be cool. interesting. Uh, is it like with Lich? Is it instead? No, he's gaining life and drawing cards. No, uh, or yeah, if he would gain life, he he draws cards instead. If okay. he takes any damage, if he, he um, then he has to sacrifice the permanent. Okay. Yeah. And if the Lich goes away, then um, he's dead. Yeah. So, okay. So he pumped a whole bunch of mana into the candle and then untapped everything. So we can uh, basically double his mana here mm -hmm. if he wants. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, why you mentioned the time warp is basically because of the... 
Okay, big brain geyser. Yeah, he time walked before uh, the turn before he cast the lich. Whereas if he had if he had the time walk and uh, um, on the turn that he cast the lich, because he had the mirror, he could untap exactly. and then just switch life totals and then it's game over. <clears throat> so the setup would be uh, trying to switch life in your upkeep with the uh, yeah. universe. Okay, so we use. <laughs> tapping time. both of those for mana it's, it's taking a point and sacrificing the mox instead yeah dark heart of the wood so he can so sacrifice a okay so he draws a card and then he sacrificed a forest to gain three life but instead of gaining the life he's going to draw three cards because of the lich all right so both decks going off in a way right <clears throat> yeah so he needs he just needs a regrowth here yeah okay uh, so he can he can sacrifice all of his tapped forests right now, um, and draw a whole bunch of cards, and then he gets a, a regrowth, and he can uh, regrowth the uh, time walk and cast it. Yeah, and uh, like fast bond. Mm -hmm. Okay, now he draws two cards now because he now has two enchantresses. Yeah, and the, the dawns of the Mons is actually the an enchantress also. Uh, no, like enchantress also. So that's mm -hmm. why. Uh, I think he only drew one extra card instead of two, though. Okay, might might have done that. Um, what you mentioned earlier, also, he might be playing recalls, maybe one of them at least, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, but the regrowth is going for an upkeep. Uh, uh, Gordon should put a put in. I actually have like this. I haven't used it that much, but it says F six. I don't know. It says, like, <laughs> a, a modo. Yeah, yeah. Um, I have one. I have one too for when I play. Um, you know, there are a lot of people who play old school who also play legacy, and they don't understand that uh, if you tapped out, you're not doing anything. There is no force of will in this format, so just yeah. keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. <laughs> and like, I'm, I'm, I'm just chilling out. You don't need to tell me what you're doing. I'm, I'm just enjoying the show. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm mentioning it because Gordon put his beer in the middle of a table and just like, right. okay, do your worst. Yeah. So, all right. So the Sylvan Library there is just basically to draw cards off the two, uh, uh, the two copies of Enchantress. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, he has the false bond. Yeah. And, and, he, and each time he's playing a land, um, he's taking a point, but he's sacrificing something that's not a forest. Okay. So there's the recall. All right, so uh, the recall can uh, he can just recall for one and get back the time walk and then recast the time walk and that's all she wrote. Yeah, he did have the lotus and he had an extra lab and yeah, so yeah. that was a sweet turn. I that think. was definitely a sweet turn. I mean, it was technically like three turns, but, <laughs> <laughs> but that's magic. That's real magic. And that's the fun part about old school is, is things yeah. like this, where 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 you get to watch things like this. Um, you know, Enchantress isn't that great of a card, um, but it, it is definitely a casual card, and it is a fun card to play. And same with Lich, and same with Mana Flare. But uh, being able to put all of these cards together and, and yeah. play Gordon something is like that shaking is his fist amazing. in frustration there. But exactly, yeah, putting putting up all the small weird pieces together to make them fit in this perfect puzzle. <laughs> That's when you're when you're in the right space, right, Rich? Yeah, yeah. Every every you know every person plays magic a little bit differently um and there are people who are brewers and like to play you know with their own spicy decks uh their own concoctions of things there are people who want to be spikes all the time um and then there are people who like to be on both ends of the spectrum and yeah. uh, that, that's the great thing uh when i first started playing old school people said well the format is solved and you vote you're only limited with so many cards so there's no point in playing mm -hmm. um on my stream uh, for the last uh, forty weeks, I've played thirty-nine different decks. Yeah. So and I love how you're talking about spectrum. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, that we're we're not talking about like having a uh, like school problem or anything. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about old school mm -hmm. magic. Right. You're, you're in a different like. Mm -hmm. 
place yeah. in the spectrum. So yeah. can you just probably right about about I have 30, I have 39 different decks in 40 <laughs> weeks. And yeah. the, the the funny so, thing is the so only have deck you that been I've playing created, through the spectrum or yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Definitely. Uh, you know, sometimes it's on one end and sometimes it's on the other. And the funny thing is the only deck that I've repeated is actually um, is a Lich deck. So it's just it's just kind of funny that we're talking about that yeah. while we're watching somebody play an Enchanter's Lich deck. I, so. We did have a chat with like, I do you believe it was Elliot? I don't know. I don't know who was. But like the last NoobCon we had like for real playing, sitting down, uh, one guy came and he brought his like Lich deck and it's like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm doing this. But in the same time, there was this whole team came who <laughs> came there. It's like, <laughs> okay, we're going to make Lich work. <laughs> there you go. So they had like this like Lich like mirrors <laughs> in this. <laughs> Like the largest, then at least, like like player meeting tournament. So my favorite uh, thing to do with Lich is to cast Eureka um, to get the Lich onto the table. Yeah, uh, we see. I mean, David used um, used the Mana Flare to to more easily get uh, Quad Black. But, yeah, yeah uh, because of the that's the problem with the card. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what what are you doing else? You're you're playing Eureka. Is the mirror the main way to go about like time walking? Or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then um, the most recent version, I also had one fireball in there too, mm -hmm. just in case. You never know. Yep. But, fireball. Uh, yeah. That's like that's like the basic move, I guess. Like mm -hmm. you need some way of uh, ending stuff. Right. Yeah. So I was using things with uh, like uh, um, Howling Minds to, to help draw extra cards, and obviously Sylvan Libraries, um, Fast Bonds to get more land out on the table for the extra cards that you were drawing, um, and then uh, Mirror Universe to switch life totals so that you can do it again um, if you can't combo off too early. And then obviously Mirror Universe is your win condition as well. Um, so the most important card is Time Walk. Uh, mm -hmm. So that you can cast Mirror Universe and then Time Walk on the, the following turn. Yeah, sorry, Time Walk so you can use the, the Mirror right away, basically, yeah. on the following turn. But Yeah, I'm thinking maybe like either that way or you're doing something. I don't know. Yeah, you, I think Mirror Universe might be the safest route to go about to comboing off yeah. the lich mm -hmm. uh, and you, you don't having win. having channel and fireballing in your deck uh, you know as, as a backup win condition isn't necessarily a bad thing so yeah. <laughs> and we did see like the fast bond and the uh, dark heart of the wood like yeah. the mirror ball actual package usually Mm -hmm. So that fits yeah, it, it, it wouldn't surprise me if he has a fireball in there when he has the uh, the mana flares. Now that we've gotten to see a little bit more of his deck, mm -hmm. so uh, should be pretty interesting yeah. to see and how game candelabra goes. also clearly right, yeah. right. So he's yeah. got some candle flare action. He's got some some mirror ball action. He's got an enchantress deck. It's a, a deck of many things, but it looks like that uh, when it works, it's spectacular. So yeah. <laughs> and that's great. And that's what to do. We're spectacular. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, and and going for Gordon's deck, he oh, he's more of a linear deck, I'd say. More value. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean he, he's basically a combo deck with, with the things that he's got going on, you know, but his combo is, is a little it's bit not slower. relying on the combo in the same way. Right. It's uh, you know, it's get a get a creature down and then use whatever creature that is to get a bigger creature down, and um, and then attack. So it's uh, it's not as flashy or as showy as what David did with the uh, the lich and the enchantments and the enchantress and and all that other thing. But uh, it is still a pretty novel concept. It is it is pretty nice to be able to do things like that. It kind of he kind of did his flashy dance in the first game. Yeah, but uh, in the second game, it was more of a just punching through with big creatures. With the reanimates, like being uh, the flavor, we didn't see any sacrifice. We didn't see any metamorphosis then. 
I no, I mean, the thing is, I mean, David had to win that turn because, I mean, mm-hmm. Gordon was putting so much pressure on him yeah. that, that he could end up uh, he could have ended up winning um, that that following turn. So yeah, you're completely right. Uh, Gordon is looking at kind of a good hand, not not a perfect hand, but he has lands. I don't think he can ship that this. Uh, no, he's got a sacrifice. Is that two copies of sacrifice, or is that a sacrifice and an animate dead? Can't uh, quite tell. No, I can't tell. He's got a red elemental blast, uh, mm-hmm. a city, and a land. He does the thing. Okay. All right. That, that's kind of the best draw he could have. Done. Uh, yeah, I heard that Library of Alexandria is a good card. Yeah, and um, especially... I think we saw that earlier on the stream. <laughs> <laughs> especially if you're going back and forth. Right, like they're yeah. doing, but this was like the first two games. Also, they're like go, 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 and then mm-hmm. something happened. So we're, we're we're we've had mind twist also being played from. Was it Gordon both games? Yeah, Gordon played a mind twist as well. Yeah. Uh, um. Okay, an enchantress. All right, wild growth, draw a card. This is what you what you want to do with Enchantress. Yeah. I'd All right. Say. So now Gordon has the active library. Let's mm-hmm. see what he can do. Looks but, like he drew another copy of Sacrifice, but now he's got a copy of Mishra's Factory. But so oh, nice David factory. Has, has his own uh, like drawing engine now. So right. And we didn't see any lightning bolts or anything from uh, Gordon. Uh, the main answer is in his hand. Oh, another enchantress. Mm. Wow. Uh, it's a red elemental lost, actually, that can deal with Dance of Benny for the red elemental blast. But it do it do is it it's not a trigger. Is it comes into play with the enchantress? Uh you know, I'm not familiar enough with the oh, enchantress to know. I think it is when you cast it though. Um that's um, how most of the other ones work. Uh, yeah, they're setting them aside so they can look it up. But uh, I'm fairly certain it's uh, when you uh, cast it. Okay, they're looking it up now. Are they? Yeah, there it is. Okay. That's oh, too small on my screen. Uh, it's in play. You cost, so you actually. Yeah, get it's to draw. when you cast it. Yep. So you you actually get to draw two cards there anyhow. So. It's a win-win for... Uh, Whenever you cast an enchantment spell, you may draw a card, so... Hmm. Uh, so, in the chat, these games are very creative from deck construction to the turn played. I can't imagine lines like this in Modern Magic. I agree oh. with Dr. Struggles in the chat. Uh, but he also says, I don't think Richard Garfield imagined this either. No, that's also true. I, I'm always amazed how this game could develop from alpha to what we're doing right now, Rich. Mm-hmm. Uh, like we're talking about like the first few sets and <laughs> we're, we're talking about so many weird interactions that you and I need to like really look up <laughs> like what happens right. now. <laughs> okay, Gordon. Okay, we can hear. Mm-hmm. Uh, Gordon put us in on uh, their. Uh, vocals. Uh, they're talking about mind twist right now, and yeah. that, that actually yeah. what we because Gordon was originally going to play, uh, uh, going to cast a, a rook egg, but then he took it back. Mm. So, uh, and so he wanted to not put David on mind twist, and oh. I'm actually, you can't really play around mind twist like this long into a game, I guess. You just need to, like in the first few turns, yes, but 
if you're not playing counter spells, it's not like a thing. You just need and to for anyone who watching this game and like what, can, what you see, you please uh, follow the channel or subscribe or more of if you thing really now, like it, give us a tip or join uh, the Patreon. <laughs> Mana Flare, draw every three cards. Friday from 8 p.m. Spicy decks and uh, other I, I old school content. If, uh, David has <laughs> it yet. <laughs> no. I'm Fast gonna bonds, draw three cards. Oh, going Lordy. off with yeah, whatever going now, and I have no chance. So I really well, like his deck. Uh, yeah, this, this seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, but what Gordon is doing is more. It, it don't have the same soft spots, I'd say. Like all right, so we yeah. played three lands. Uh, took two points of damage. Sorry, three points of damage. Mm. Yeah, that Maze of Ith probably isn't going to do much right now, but you never know. Yeah, and David is at seven in his uh, yeah. dark card of the wood now or something to keep going. Uh, I don't know if... Well, I mean, any enchantment is going to draw him three cards, so... Yeah. I don't know if he kept in, like... Uh, Time Twister or something like that. He's got a lot of mana. Yeah. So he's figuring through his steps. Uh, it's looking at blue. I don't know if he's figuring out because we did see a big brain gazer last game, right? Right. Maybe that's what he does this time. Okay. Another false bond. That's the cool part about playing Fastborn when you have Enchantress, right? <laughs> it actually does something. Um, yeah, it draws cards, but uh, uh, the the bad thing is now he's going to take two points for every extra land he plays. Hmm. Okay. Because so, uh, so both both of the fast bonds will trigger. I see. So Fastborn triggers for each additional yeah. card. Yeah. So he takes two. Yeah. Yeah, one for each fast bond. So he's down to three. Well, he was just at seven, so he should have just taken f four. He should be at three, not two. Mm. All right, so there's a Lich. All right, it doesn't matter now uh, what his life total is because it's zero. All right, and he just drew three three more cards, played a land. He has to sacrifice the fast one. He's got to sacrifice two things, though. Yeah. Yeah, but that's the only other time. Like, he probably should have sacrificed the library, of, uh, the sorry, the Sylvan library there, because it's not going to do him any good if he, uh, um, unless he passes the turn. But obviously, he does not want to pass the turn. All right, there's the dark heart. Draw three cards. All right, and then each one of those taps for us can be, ta can be sacrificed to... Uh, to draw three cards. Yeah, he's going off right now. So he's, he's got plenty of options. Um, so the Maze of Ith is something that he can just sacrifice when he plays a land, so that uh, uh, sacrifice it to the fast bond damage. Mm -hmm. All right, so there goes a mox. Tap for yeah. mana. I don't know Draw if three. he's doing what we talked about right now. You need to sacrifice two cards then? If no, no, no. He already sacrificed, okay, okay, the, okay, he sacrificed the first fast bond. Yeah, I see. So now he's, he's playing a bunch of lands. He's sacrificing a bunch of stuff. Gordon's pouring some more beer. So <laughs> it's all is right for the world. F6 thing. Mm -hmm. All right, so there's the mirror. So now we need to get a, uh, you know, need to get a time walk. Yeah. Sacrifice mm -hmm. a forest. Lotus. Draw three cards. Cracking a lotus for time walk. Okay, there it okay. is. There we have it. For the game. That's all. Yeah, that was. Right.